So there are many ways to build up fluency. Uh, basic everyday activities like morning meeting are opportunities to build up oral reading fluency. Doing reader's theater or doing any type of oral presentation. These are all different ways of building up oral fluency. Working with a partner, doing partner readings where, where, where I read, you read, or some type of partner share reading are ways to build up fluency. Remember, fluency is the ability to read with the proper speed, accuracy, and expression. So when you do these different activities, you, you might be working on one facet of fluency. Maybe it's the proper speed. Maybe you're working on the proper pronunciation and intonation of words. So, or maybe you're working on uh, helping a student build up their, their accuracy. So these different activities can help fluency in lots of different ways, okay? Now we're gonna go into this, this question here. Um, this is a fun one but they're gonna get more detailed, okay? So, so let's start. I want you to, this is a little harder. Uh, take a moment, this is on fluency, building that speed, accuracy, and proper pronunciation of words or expression. I want you to take three minutes. And I want you to read this to yourself, okay? And then we'll talk about it. Three minutes, pause me now, pause, and then unpause when you're ready. longer question, right? <laughs> I mean, you can look at this. The setup is longer. The question is pretty normal. But um, whenever you see a long setup and you see a short question, maybe it's best to, to start and just take a look at the question first. And that's actually where I would I want you to begin, where we, we are going to begin. I just want you to take a moment and do me a favor and read that over two times. And I'll, I'll give you a few moments to do that. Read it over a few times. Okay, read it. Pause me now. Unpause. Now, this you can read very quickly and identify what the core concept is. It says here, which of the following rationales best describes the advantages of using poems for fluency practice? That's it. That's the whole thing. Literally, that, that scenario, that's the scenario. This is the idea. This is the key concept here this fluency. And how are we doing fluency? Well, we're going to be using, using poems to build fluency. All right. So that's, that's the gist. Now we could actually, I think, answer this question just with that, just with that scenario, using poems for fluency, but let's just go through the scenario since it's awfully long. Um, notice how there's uh, quite a bit of a setup. Okay. I mean, this whole thing, that whole first half is just is just the the opening okay okay but let's uh let's just read it it says here a first grade teacher creates uh poetry booklets i love it for students each uh to read each day as a morning warm-up activity to begin supporting their development of reading fluency let's circle this activity uh poetry booklets and first grade beginner reader remember we got that beginner reader I'll put down maybe six to seven years old. So they're just starting out. They're using poetry. It's a warm up activity for fluency. Why would they be using poetry? Well, usually poetry, um, it's not as long, not as uh, aspects of it aren't as wordy. There's a lot of rhyme and alliteration. And it might be something which, and they're meant to be practiced over and over again to build up the proper speed, accuracy, and expression. Okay, let's keep going. I'll pretend we didn't know that, and let's just keep going. The teacher sequences the poems in the booklets according to phonics patterns and high-frequency words. Okay, so so they're choosing um, rhyming words with certain uh, phonics patterns and 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 certain high-frequency words. Okay, that's good. That students have recently learned. Okay, so that's good. We we know that building phonics is going to help with fluency. We know that uh, increasing a student's high-frequency vocab. Uh, vocabulary is going to also help with fluency. Okay. All right. At the beginning of each week, the teacher works with small groups of students to ensure that they can read their new poem, poem of the week accurately. Okay, great. It's sort of a, a reading group there. The rest of the week, the students practice reading the new poem uh, with a classmate for their group. Okay. So they do some partner work. Is that right? So we, we, we already have a sense that you can develop fluency in lots of different ways. One way is working with a partner. All right. They are also uh, they also practice reading aloud other poems in their fluency uh, warm up booklet. 
that they've previously learned. Okay, all right. Which so there's so many cool things going on in this activity. There's the there's the booklet. This is a warm up activity. They're practicing words that they've uh, learned the phonics patterns to, and also they're high, building up their high frequency vocabulary. The teacher is working with them in small group, and they get to practice in, in uh, working with the partner. These are all things that we do to build fluency. Okay, which of the, now we get back to that question, which we actually didn't even need to read this question, I think, to answer it, but, but let's get back to it. Um, which of the following rationales best describes the advantages, the advantage of using poems for fluency practice? Is it A, uh, poems, poetry, poetry, poems. So poems frequently have predictable structures uh, to support phonics development. Is that true? Is this predictable structures? Is this, I think this is referencing maybe predictable text, right? And, uh, and, and, uh, and that may, they, that's true. It, they may have predictable, a uh, predictable structure. I don't know if that's a, um, and, and that may in some way support phonics development. That's true. There may be some predictable structures, rhyme and alliteration, and that may reinforce a, a specific type of phonics pattern if you're trying to target it. Maybe you're trying to target a specific diagraph or diphthong or controlled R or vowel sound, whatever it is, you may be trying to target something. Um, that that is probably true, but it's not. That's not connected necessarily directly to fluency, right? It's it's good. That would be helpful for phonics if you're using poems to develop, you know, specific phonics rules, but not necessarily fluency. Let's keep going. Poetry uh, resources are typically abundant in most classroom libraries. Uh, again, that 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 probably is true. There probably are a lot of uh, poetry books in classrooms. But that's not directly connected to why you do it for fluency, to build a student's, student's proper speed, accuracy, and expression when reading aloud. How about this one right here? So, so this is out and this is out because they're not directly talking about how it's going to help with the student's uh, proper speed, accuracy, and expression. How about uh, D? Poems can be found in many lengths and address many topics. Again, it's a true statement. <laughs> Your Honor, we cannot deny this is a true statement, but it, it's not directly connected to the rationale of why you'd use it for fluency. Uh, let's get to the answer. Let me circle it. Uh, poetry is meant to be read aloud and rereading many times to construct meaning. So this is this, this thing. And we didn't need this scenario to know that. If you just knew that this was a poetry fluency scenario, well, poetry itself, they're shorter. They're meant to be uh, read uh, over and over again. And in reading it over and over again, you build that accuracy and that speed and the proper expression, right? Uh, poetry has a lot of rhyming words, potentially uh, rhymes and alliteration and lots of, lots of repetition. So it would be a little easier for a student to uh, acquire some of that repetition through the, the structure of the poem. So again, that's all we needed this right here to get to see because it's they're meant to be read aloud and you're meant to read them many multiple times as part of a way to construct meaning so team what i so the answer c what i noticed about you know some of these questions as they go into these more advanced questions or longer questions on your exams the newer ones this is from the 190 is that they seem to be working really hard to present an authentic scenario, which I enjoy, I appreciate. But, you know, you need to be able to spot right away that this is about poetry and fluency, right? And poems and fluency. And if you could spot that right away, maybe you could turn this three minute question, maybe you could cut this into a two minute question. Or maybe if you're, if you're really in a rush, right? And you just saw poems and fluency, maybe you could even cut this into a one minute question. Try that. See if you could get to the answer just by reading the actual prompt. I think if you could do that and, and identify this as a poetry, uh, a fluency poetry question, meaning how, how are poems helpful to build fluency? If you just had that grain idea, that essential idea, could you answer this in one minute? I bet you could. Okay. All right. The answer team is C. This is a great question from this test here. So we got C. 
And it's just reinforcing this idea, uh, this this uh, fluency, practice how way different ways of practicing fluency, and how and and they they mention all these different ways of practicing fluency, with the shared reading in the morning met uh, the morning the morning activities, and also you know using poetry. So add that into your 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 scenarios for fluency. Okay, all right. Let's go to another uh, really good one. Let's keep going. 